Okay, so we have a nice topic here, statistics. We're told a class of 26 students each record a distance in kilometers traveled to school. The distance to the nearest kilometer is recorded below. And so we have 26 records of the distance students travel to school. For instance, one student traveled a distance of 21 kilometers. Another student traveled a distance of 11 kilometers to school. Now, let's look at the table here. We're told to copy and complete it. The first heading, we have distance in kilometers. The next heading, midpoint. In other words, class midpoint. We have the next column, which is frequency. And the next column, we have cumulative frequency. Now, let's complete. Let's start with the midpoint, class midpoint. So this, these are the classes. In the first class, we have the lower limit of 1 and the upper limit of 5. So the first number represents the lower limit and the higher number represents the upper limit. Now, to find the midpoint, we basically add the lower and the upper limit and divide by 2, basically taking the average of both end numbers. 1 plus 5 gives us 6. Divided by 2, that gives us 3. 6 plus 10 divided by 2 is 16 over 2, which gives us 8. 11 plus 15, that's 26. And 26 divided by 2, that gives us 13. If we notice, we need to add 1 to 2. Let me go over that. We need to, to increase 1 by 2 to get 3. When we add 2 to, to 6, we get 8. When we add 2 to 11, we get 13. So we can just keep adding 2, and we're going to have 18, 23, 28, 33, and 38. A bit of a faster way. We just basically recognize that the midpoint will be 2 added to each lower limit, or we can say, to subtracted from each upper limit. But safest way is to add the upper and lower limit and divide by two. In terms of the frequencies, how many persons travel a distance of one kilometer to five kilometers? Let's see. This person traveled three, so that's fall in the class or range of one to five. Let's see, we have, have another. No, so there's only one person. 6 to 10, we have 1, 2, we have 2 persons. 11 to 15, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 persons. We have 16 to 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 persons. 21 to 25, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 persons. 26 to 30, 1, 2, 3, we have 3 persons, 31 to 35, 1, 2, we have 2 persons, and then 36 to 40, we have 1 person. Now when we add these up, we should get the total number of persons. Now, we are told that there are 26 students. So we find the sum, the sigma symbol we're going to use for the sum, the sum of the frequencies. 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 4 is 7, plus 7 is 14, plus 6 is 20, 23, plus 2, that's 25, plus 1, 26. So that's correct. In terms of cumulative frequency, what we do, we're going to add up each successive uh, frequency. So cumulative means we are accumulating the frequencies. 
So in the first row, we'll have the same amount. In the second row, we're going to add 1 to the next number, which is 2 here, and we're going to get 3. In the next row, we're going to add the 3 to the 4. That's going to give us 7. Next row, we're going to add 7 to 6. We're going to get 13. 13 plus 7, that's 20. 20 plus 3, that's 23. 23 plus 2, that's 25. And 25 plus 1, that's 26. So the last figure is the same as the total frequency. And what this 3 represents, though, let's see if you understand what cumulative frequency is about. It's saying that since we're in the second row, we're always going to pin this very first lower limit of the first class. And since we're in the second row, we're saying from 1 to 10. How many persons travel a distance of 1 kilometer to 10 kilometers? We add 1 plus 2 and we get the 3. And when we say, okay, for this, what does this 7 here represent? What does that 7 represent? This 7 here is telling us that from 1 kilometer to 15 kilometers, how many persons fall in that range in terms of the distance they travel to school? Well, it's 1 plus 2 plus 4, and that will give us 7. And so that's the idea. And so let's do one last one so we can understand what's going on. What does 26 represent in a cumulative frequency column? It's telling us a distance of 1 to 40 kilometers. How many person we have traveled a distance of 1 to 40? That's 26. So that's basically the idea. Okay, now, so what we'll do now, we'll go on since we have completed the table. The next question is, is, has been asked is, state the modal class. Now the modal class is a class with the most persons. So our highest frequency. So let's look at the highest frequency. The highest frequency here is actually um, seven. That's the highest frequency. And we go over to see which class has these um, seven individuals. And that's the class 21 to 25. So remember we say modal class. So we're looking for the class with the most frequency or that the class that has the most um, students. And that's the class 21 to 25. State the upper limit and the lower limit. This one asks for the upper limit and the upper limit is 35. State the upper limit and lower limit of the class 31 to 35. So the upper limit is 35 and the lower limit is 31. We're going to ask about the same class here, so we have to pay attention to that. Now, so the next question asks, what is the mean distance in kilometers traveled by the students to school? For us to get the mean, understand what we're saying here. So let me just do a quick example. Let's say get $5 on a Monday, $10 on a Tuesday, $20 on Wednesday and $15 on Thursday. What is the mean of the amount of money you get on the, in the four days? This is just talking about the average, the arithmetic mean or average. So what we do, we add up the number of values, five plus 10 plus 20 plus 15, and we divide by what? The number of values, which is four. And the answer to that will be what we what is known as the mean. Right? The mean average. Sometimes referred to as X bar. So to get the mean distance traveled, we're gonna do something similar. Okay, so what we're gonna do is to examine what we have here. Now this person traveled a distance of what? Well, since we have one to five, there's no way of knowing exactly what the distance the person traveled unless we go back to the raw data. But ignoring the raw data and looking at just this table, we decide to use the midpoint to represent the distance that this person traveled of three kilometers. Similarly, these two persons, rather than going back to the raw data to determine the distance traveled by each, of the, each person, we use the average, in other words, the midpoint of this class, which is eight kilometers. So we're saying two persons travel a distance of 
eight kilometers. So one person travel distance of three kilometers, the other two person travel distance of eight kilometers. So eight plus eight. Another person travel distance of thirteen kilometers. Four of them. Thirteen plus thirteen plus thirteen plus thirteen. So when we want to find them, I'm going to do the same thing with the rest. So when we're trying to find the mean, we're simply going to add them up. One, eight, three, plus eight, plus eight, plus thirteen. Now instead of saying thirteen plus thirteen plus thirteen plus thirteen four times, we can just simply say thirteen times four. And rather than saying eight plus eight, we can say what? Eight times two. And we'll get our and we continue to add the rest, right? When we get the total, we're going to divide that total by 26 since there are 26 students and that will give us the mean or average so it's the same thing as in we would have added up all these 26 data values and divide by 26 to find the mean but since we're not looking at the raw data we're looking at the the table here then we'll take the midpoint to represent each of the values these persons and find the mean what is the mean distance travel to school by the students? So we could either use these values or in the table, but it's intended to say using the table, find it what is the mean distance or the approximated mean. So what we do, we take the mean to be equal to. And what we're going to do, we're going to do multiply one times three. So we're seeing one person travel distance of three kilometers plus the next person two times well two persons travel distance of eight kilometers so we're saying two times eight plus and do the same thing with the rest four times 13 six times 18 seven times 23 etc and we add them up so we have done that here as you can look at the last figures three times 28 two times 20, 33 1 times 38 and we want to divide that by the total number of students and this will give us so we multiply out the top and add the values we'll get 528 divided by 26 and dividing 528 by 26 we'll get 20.307 etc but let's round this off to the nearest kilometers and we'll get 20 kilometers. That's our answer in terms of the mean average. Calculate the probability that a student chosen at random from this class recorded the distance traveled to school as 26 kilometers or more. So what is probability? So what we'll do, we'll look at an example. Now probability is really the number of favorable outcomes divided by the total possible outcomes. So before we do question E, let's look at an example. If I should flip a coin, what is the probability that I'll get a head? Well, what's the total possible outcome? Well, there's a possibility that I could get tails, there's also a possibility I could get heads. So there are two possible outcomes. In terms of favorable, what I'm looking for is head. So that's only one favorable outcome. And so the probability of getting head is a half. And what we will see, a half is really half of 100%. So that's 50%. So there's a 50% chance of me getting heads. And there's a 50% chance of me not getting heads, which means I'll get tails. So going back to this example, the total possible outcome. So if a student was to be chosen at random, it means that it's a possibility that I could pick any one of the 26 students. Remember, there are 26 students in this class. So there's a possibility you could pick any one of the 26 students. So the total possible outcome will be 26. But in terms of favorable outcomes, what am I looking for? I'm looking for those students who traveled a distance of 26 
kilometers or more. So that will be those students in this class, this class, and this class. Class in terms of the distance traveled. So remember, class is another name for group. So what we know so far is that we have seven students who travel 21 to 25 kilometers. Six students who travel 16 to 20, etc. But in terms of 26 to 40, or 26 or more, which is really 26 to 40 in this case, 26 or more kilometers, those who traveled, you have three students who traveled 26 to 30. So they traveled in the range of 26 or more. These students traveled in the range of 26 or more because they traveled a distance of 31 to 20, 35. This student traveled a distance of 36 to 40. So they traveled, so or he or she traveled in the, the range 26 or more as well. So the total um, possible outcome was 26. But in terms of favorable outcome, we have 3 plus 2 plus 1. That's six students, a possibility of six students who actually, what, traveled a distance of 26 or more. So that's a favorable outcome. The six students, so any one of these six, six students would have been a favorable outcome. Remember, I'm looking for what? If I choose a student at random, what's the chance of me selecting a student who traveled 26 kilometers or more? Any one of these six students would be a favorable outcome because... Any one of these six students would have traveled a distance of 26 kilometers or more. So in terms of the probability of students who traveled 26 kilometers or more, which I'll write like this, probability 26 or more, is actually equal to 6 over 26. And so we can actually simplify this by dividing by 2, make 3, divided by 2, get 13. So 3 out of 13 is the probability simplified by the way.